And uh, maybe I can uh, pass over uh, the microphone uh, to Michael and Christine, if you wanted to introduce yourselves to everyone. Thanks. Sure. Hi there, everyone. My name is Michael Furtick, and I'm the Director of Innovation at Taking It Global. We're a charity based here uh, in Toronto, uh, and we were co-founders of the Who's Land Initiative with a few other organizations. And I'll talk a little bit more about it in a few minutes, but I'll just maybe let Christine introduce herself first, and then I'll do a little bit of a tour of the new platform. Sounds good. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our workshop, and thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to start by talking a little bit of myself and how I got into this work, and then we will take you through this pretty incredible resource. Um, so my name is Christine Malott, and I'm a high school teacher, curriculum developer, and textbook author. Um, I am Indigenous. My mom is from Swan Lake First Nation, and my dad's family is from Poland. So growing up, I actually heard two very different stories about Canada. Um, on one side, I heard about the Canadian dream, where my Polish grandparents uh, were fleeing prosecution in Poland and decided to immigrate to Canada around the 1920s. It was this time that the Canadian government was offering free plots of land to European immigrants to entice them to move to Canada. So my Polish grandparents uh, got a free plot of land here in Manitoba, where I live currently, and they worked really hard and they were able to survive through the Great Depression. They were able to create a middle class lifestyle for themselves. They eventually were able to sell their farm and buy a home in Winnipeg, where I grew up. Um, and so this idea of, you know, starting from nothing and really working your way up into society and building a really great life for yourself was one story that I was told. Um, I was also told another story growing up. And this one was from my mother's side of the family. Um, on this side of the family, I heard more about the Canadian nightmare. So I grew up hearing about how my grandma at the tender age of six was forcibly removed from her home and sent to residential school. Um, at this time, she didn't speak English. She only spoke Anishinaabe Moin, which is our indigenous language. And so she didn't even know what was happening to her. Um, of course, her parents were threatened with jail time if they didn't comply, so they really had no power um, to stand up for themselves and, um, and keep my grandma at home. So I heard these stories, um, and my grandma is also one of the 6,000 former residential school survivors who testified at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission about the physical, emotional, spiritual, and sexual abuse that she experienced at these schools. Um, so when I was in public school growing up, I never learned about any Indigenous topic in school. Um, I never learned about Indigenous history, culture, or current topic. And so I've made it my mission as a teacher to ensure that all students learn about these really important topics. Um, so I'm happy to be here with you all today and share this pretty exciting resource. Um, I helped to create the lesson plans that accompany the resource. So I think we should just probably uh, get into it. Sounds great. Thanks, Christine. I will um, grab my screen sharing here. And first, just to share a bit about our organization. So Taking It Global is a, a nonprofit organization, a charity uh, based across Canada. And for us, one of the things, as Christine talked about, the lesson plans and resources she created really around helping people reflect and create their own land acknowledgement. So while I'm situated here in Toronto, just with one spoon territory and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee and Wendat peoples, as an organization, our, our, the acknowledgement we created was that we really want to acknowledge our interconnectedness and our thanks for the water that flows and the life that grows each day. As an organization, we're comprised with a team in many provinces and territories situated on Indigenous lands, and we approach our work with a shared responsibility and accountability in seeing how we can play a role in upholding treaty agreements and awareness of ancestors who come before us and thinking and investing really in the impact of our efforts for generations to come. So that's, that's an acknowledgement that we developed as a team through part of the process that Christine helped us to develop as lesson plans and resources that she'll share. And that's something that we share prominently uh, on our new website homepage at tigweb.org. And that also links everyone to who's.land. So the resource we're sharing with you today 
um, was, again, the name was kind of inspired in a conversation I had with one of our friends and collaborators, Karen Rastoul from Dokis First Nation. And we were kind of joking about this idea of that show, you know, uh, you know, whose line is it anyway? Whose land is it anyway? And we realized the website whose.land was available. And so the vision uh, kind of came to life around Canada's 150th uh, sequicentennial in 2017. We had an initiative called Explore 150 that was helping people learn about different natural, cultural, and historic sites. And on top of that, we had created a treaties map uh, that brought forward work we did about a decade ago when we had several uh, First Nations team members working with us to build a global Indigenous youth portal. Uh, and we realized there wasn't really much awareness as, as similar to Christine, you know, uh, I didn't learn anything in school about uh, treaties or residential schools. My family background on both sides is Ukrainian. And um, it was really a missing element of my own learning and education. So we were doing that treaty map work about a decade ago, and then we overlaid it on top of the Explore 150 site. And Christine said, or uh, Karen said to me, wouldn't it be great if there was a resource where people could go beyond just this 150 to learn more about the land that they're on? You know, she shared that often she gets phone calls from friends or politicians or folks she advises saying, oh, I'm going to this community. What do I say? You know, what's the right thing to say uh, to acknowledge appropriately? And so wouldn't it be great if there was a resource and an app that did that? So we really worked on this at the side of our desks as volunteers to create the first version. And what I'm pleased to share with you today is now, you know, five or six years in the works and it involved conversations with almost every community that's listed, verifying information and collaborating with another group called Native Land that had a, has a similar portal with a slightly different focus and building on top of and sharing back work with them too, just not to duplicate effort. So just to briefly show you here on the homepage, it, it might be obvious, but there's six different map layers. So when you first come to the site, the default map layer is treaties and agreements. And we recently expanded that not only in Canada, but to cover uh, some of the treaties and agreements and sessions in the US. There's then a territories by city view, and this was really the one that Karen was originally trying to respond to. Someone saying, oh, you know, what's the right thing to say? You know, who do I acknowledge if I'm in Perry Sound or in Wawa or in Thunder Bay or Toronto? So each of these pins is kind of major cities and towns across Canada and links both to the treaties that cover that uh, community, but also the closest community. There's also a view that highlights all communities. So 600 plus First Nations and all the Métis and Inuit communities across Canada territories by land view and this one is global from native land that kind of gives you a sense of all the different uh, and many overlapping um, you know traditional territories from communities um, one of the views that was added last year was residential schools so looking at you know the history of residential schools and linking back to the work that the trc did um, showcasing that that element of history for people to learn uh, learn from and finally the latest layer is leadership stories. And I'll talk a little bit more about this, but uh, we've now interviewed over 400 First Nations, Inuit and Métis role models, experts, authors, you know, really inspiring folks and, and adding this layer to share their stories. And so one of the things that's great about the platform uh, is that you can actually click on and, and access content from any of these layers. But before I go into one, I just wanna highlight one other resource. And this is a video called Indigenous and Canadian Histories 101. Uh, it was created by a friend of ours, the late Sarah Robinson, and working with her family, we've now made it available for free for everyone as a learning resource. It was originally something she created for the BC government as part of their civil service training. And it's a 40 minute kind of family friendly documentary that takes people through um, really the history of, of everything. You know, as she talks about the subtitle for her was what you didn't learn in high school, you know, talking about what really should be taught uh, and, and kind of her guiding uh, everyone through a powerful narrative uh, of that history. So I encourage you to, to check that out as well. So when you go into one of these areas, whether it's a, a, a traditional territory or a treaty or a, um, a, a particular community, here's an example of the Robinson Superior Treaty, you'll get some basic information and a map, but then we've, we've kind of tried to link everything together. So leadership stories from that territory. So you can see here, there's a selection of folks who've been interviewed from that area, from that community, or that treaty territory, sharing their learning journey, their career experience, really trying to both provide more insights into people from that, that community, that area, but also to inspire students about pathways they might not know are possible. And then there's a whole series of videos. So depending on the community or the treaty, there could be one, there could be a dozen. Uh, we've tried to collaborate with a number of organizations. Uh, one of them, Nui Janan, uh, has done amazing work with over 100 communities 
producing music videos, getting students to share about their community. Uh, we worked, we funded a number of projects where youth have interviewed elders to do cultural sharing. Uh, and also increasingly also curating educational content. So this is from Lakehead University, where they have a, kind of a mini documentary about the treaty relationship. So not just trying to provide that geographic data, but we've been trying to do a lot of work with our team and with volunteers to kind of beef up this information, linking to many different sources. And then from the treaty territory, you can see, okay, which are all the communities? What are all the cultural, natural, and historic sites? and then linking everything together. So you could spend, I think, days exploring, but you can do it all through the power of that map. Just as one example of one of those leadership stories, uh, Alex Allard Gray is an amazing, inspiring scientist who's done a lot of work with our Connected North program, just as one example. So there's a video interview with him about his journey. Um, then there's a, an article written by an amazing indigenous journalist. And then often we'll have an illustration by Shaikara um, from Akwesasne as well. So we now have close to 500 of these stories and they're all creative commons, open resources as teachers. You can share them in your classroom. They're also downloadable uh, videos as well. I think the most powerful feature to me is where am I? And that's something that works both on mobile and on your computer. And if you share your location, it'll show you kind of localized data about based on where your phone or your computer is, the traditional territories you're on, the treaties and agreements that it's a part of, the closest residential school, uh, and then the different communities closest to you. So this is something that I think answers a lot of the questions we used to get. People would go to whose land, they kind of browse around, and they say, okay, but what do I say? You know, what's closest to me? And so obviously taking advantage of those GPS uh, receivers we have in our phones, this gives you very kind of precise information. But we also say to people, you shouldn't take it at face value. You know, ideally you want to do some research, go to the community, go to your nearest friendship center, you know, learn from an elder and really talk to them about what to say, because it's not something that, you know, as, as Christine's lesson plan share, ideally it's something that comes through personal relationship, not just, you know, copying and pasting from the page. So that is the where am I section. And then the most recent feature we've just added before I turn it over to Christine is a new feature in the list view where you can actually enter a location. So maybe your computer doesn't have that GPS receiver. Maybe you're doing a research about somewhere else you're going. So in that location field, you can type in any other community and then you can set the, the distance that you wanna search from. And then you'll be able to see based on that community, um, the closest and relevant communities, treaties and traditional territories. So that was one of the most frequent requests we would get is people doing research ahead of time. Maybe they're not there yet. And so now you can put a postal code or a location into that list section, and then you can browse from there and, uh, and connect and learn more about communities that way. So that's a little bit of a peek at the platform. We're gonna give you some time to explore on your own as well, but I wanted to give Christine a little bit of time to share the work she did with us, creating some lesson plans to help bring the use of this platform and generally this idea of what a land acknowledgement means uh, into both the classroom at different grade levels, but also for corporate partners. Yeah, so that was part of my job is to determine how can we scaffold these sometimes complex um, ideas about land and place and land agreements um, to be digestible for students across the grades. Um, so I came up with uh, three different grade cat categories. We have elementary school, middle school, and high school. And through each one, students learn about what is a land acknowledgement. Um, so a land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes and respects First Nation, Inuit, and Métis traditional territory. Um, it's actually a historical process. So First Nations people have been giving and using land acknowledgements for many, many years prior to colonization. Um, and it would ideally happen if you were a guest on another person's territory and you were, say, attending um, a meeting or a ceremony you would begin uh, by speaking, by acknowledging the land, whose land you're on. Um, and so you would acknowledge the host community, um, the people and their traditional territory at the beginning. Um, so today we're teaching young people how to think about their relationship to land. Um, so for example, in some of the uh, lesson plans, students for younger students, um, elementary students in particular, they will begin by thinking about place. Um, so what is a special place to you? And really getting them to like describe the place and other students try and you know guess what place it is. So making a little bit fun. 
um, then they go in and hear a land acknowledgement from an Indigenous person and they're sort of um, taking out like what, what do you notice about the land acknowledgement, what is being said here, what is being recognized. Um, and then I've created sort of a fill in the blank land acknowledgement where they're encouraged to think about um, the place that they love, the special place to them and, and maybe why they love it, um, how they benefit from the land and how they can give back to the land to ensure that the land is around uh, for future generations. Um, in grade six to nine, students start off with a um, sort of grounding meditation. So really getting students outside, thinking about, um, you know, just absorbing what's, what's around them. So thinking about what they hear, see, feel, um, and then they explore the website um, and view land acknowledgements that were created by Indigenous people. Um, and then they actually co-create um, a rubric for what they think should be included in a personal land acknowledgement. Um, and then students go on to create their own personal land acknowledgements. Um, finally, in the high school one, uh, we start off with some group discussion, so getting students to think about their connection to place and any of their prior learning about Indigenous people and their relationship to land and, and maybe the place that they occupy right now. Um, and then students do an inquiry project on Indigenous peoples and land acknowledgements, um, where one idea is to create, to recreate one of the land acknowledgement videos um, that are available on the Who's Land website. Um, so all of these lesson plans are available for free on the website, just like everything else. Um, they can be downloaded just by clicking on the learning and then uh, scrolling to whatever grade that you teach. So I think we're um, going to give you some time to explore the website on your own and maybe explore some of those uh, lesson plans um, in more detail or explore the place that you are at in uh, some more detail. I think Stacey Ann picked uh, a song just to give us our time. So this is one of the songs, right, Stacey Ann, that you picked from Norwegian one of their workshops, just to kind of keep us on time. I think we're gonna give everyone about four or five minutes to open up their browser, have a look and see what they can discover. Yeah, wonderful. So I'm just gonna play the music. Hold on, I just have to click um, screen the sound. Um, perfect. Wonderful. And yeah, I had a hard time picking. There's a lot of uh, wonderful musical artists out there. So really uh, encourage you to go and check out some of the wonderful songs. Always hunting for moose And now I'm always looking for something to do I should be on the land feeling young and true My mother always carried me And though I broke some rules, she was fair with me Worked two jobs and always there to feed I'm so grateful because of you I dare to dream I support the man through his blood A good example for his child to learn to trust Told me to think twice when it came to drinks and drugs It motivated my life and now I'm filled with love
Lan gai shwapti the gai shwimat shio Aba jameen mishko shio nyo Jaji wich pum tam go Oje The generation nowadays are kind of struggling And everybody sounds afraid Let's make the right decisions Are you down to change? Cause when I grow up I wanna say I found a way Now I'm right here Ready to fix the broken I'm trying to say what is it spoken to everybody out there who couldn't get me open? This is my revelation. Let me live the moment. The moment. I want to chase every dream. Go to college and take a chance. One promise and I will keep. I'll show you who I am. Show the world how time turns. Us and two providers. I will be a big mom. Chiki Wasu. I know sometimes it's just love that song thing <laughs> I like a, the community in the video um so I hope everybody had a few minutes to explore uh the platform and um great so now I think we're going to start uh breaking off into breakout groups So I just, um, we're coming to the end of the session, unfortunately. I'm so grateful that everybody was here. Um, I just wanted to share, uh, we do have a new website at Learn, um, and uh, we have a new page on Education for Truth and Reconciliation. Um, if you're on the page, it's been a lot of uh, curated resources, resources um, from that are produced um, by different Indigenous communities in across Quebec that could be used uh, in your classroom, we also have some like language revitalization tools in there, um, some uh, programs for schools like the legacy, uh, the Gordani Wenjack Legacy School Program. Um, so if you have time, uh, I encourage you to check it out. We also have an email list. So uh, anytime there's new events or resources, um, for example, like there's an S3 uh, run on the 30th in Sherbrooke that's open to schools. Um, so we share kind of information on our mailing list as we hear about it. And finally, I want to say a big miigwech, niawen, nekomik, thank you, merci, many other languages that I'm still trying to learn um, to all of you, uh, particularly Christine and Michael for making time out of your busy schedules uh, to help plan this workshop, to share these resources that I think uh, can do wonders for supporting uh, educator learning and for supporting uh, Indigenous and non-Indigenous students in our classrooms throughout the province. Um, I also want to say thank you to the participants for making time out of your busy teaching schedules or consulting schedules to be here and uh, to explore the platform and think about what else can be done uh, at your school and your school board um, to support your Indigenous students and bring the truth uh, into your pedagogy and practice. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. everyone. That was great.